The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Jump in to get my chart here. Apologies. And I apologize. My computer is playing catch up after being off for a week, it seems. Just one moment for me. And let me see if I can get this up here. We got markets in the positive to kick things off right now. You get the S&Ps up by about nine points. And as I said, forgive me as I get these charts up. Get this out of the way. Okay. And here comes my chart, ladies and gentlemen. One, two... Okay, and as I said, if Michael Brewster could let me know if I am live. Because right now we got the S&Ps up by about nine points right now, jumping into a five-minute chart. We're on. Perfect. I appreciate it, Al. Apologies, folks. Uh, seems like we got things working now, and we got a positive market. Boy, I missed quite a week at the end of the week last week. I appreciate Basil Chapman filling in one day, our man Jacob Shoup filling in for a couple days. Uh, but good to be back. And boy, we got quite a market, quite a Fed week last week. We have the S&Ps this morning. A lot of Fibonacci lines on this chart. Let me take those off for a little bit of clarity here. And as you can see, quite the acceleration on Friday on the jobs number. We trade up to almost 4,400. We're trading right now up by nine points on the S&P to 43.85. NASDAQ 100 this morning up by 33 points, trading at 15,212. The Dow up a similar number, 33 points, 34,169 right now when we get the Russell, barely in positive territory. Crude this morning up a buck 17. We almost got a 79 handle towards the end of the action on Friday. We're trading up a bit, up a dollar 14 for crude. You jump to gold right now, backing off from the highs. Check out the volatility on Friday, right? You get a spike to 2012. You give it all up by 930, and we're chopping around almost where we were to kick off the Friday session, trading at 1993 in the price of gold. You jump over to notes and bonds. Boy, they were the focus. I was on vacation in the Great Smoky Mountains of uh, <clears throat> Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Uh, Sevierville, Tennessee was where I was staying. Got to see some beautiful stuff. I'll pull up some pictures later in the program. But boy, I was keeping my eye on yields, most importantly, because we've been talking about this channel line. I couldn't get wait, wait to get back and talk about it. Now, the only question in my mind here is, have we had a test yet of the breakout of this channel? If you're looking at my charts on Tiger TV, we got the 10-year up here, quite the channel line. We saw how this thing really started talking about this remarkably almost a month ago as you really started to take shape as you challenged the top level of that channel line. And that is October 12th when you were up at about 108.5, as in 108.16. You trade lower to 105.10, and boy, it's been quite a resurgence. That resurgence mostly taking place in the last five or six days last week from where we were at a 105 handle to 107.27. Now, that's on a daily chart on the 10-year. You zoom in a little bit, and let's just put it on like an hourly chart, okay? So you can really see how this thing came out of the channel originally. Now, that's going back to October 12th. That's where we originally got that spike. I was talking about on the program saying it's a critical area, right? We're going to get a reversal. Boy, you got a reversal right out of the gate, man, October 12th. You trade down almost within, what, the bar there was at about 105.06. You make it to 105.10, so three or four ticks away from actually hitting the bar. The channel line on the lower boundary, you come out of the channel line, okay? And what's so interesting, man, is you break out of that channel line and look at the pullback. Almost a perfect test. Now, it could be a perfect test, but it's an art, not a science, and you're right around. Just give me one second here. There we go. You're right around that line, as in that's that might not be a real test. That just might be the breakout, okay? Now, what's interesting is, is if that's the breakout, right? You really get a little breakout, and then you get a, a test, Maybe that's what we're coming for right now. And you're about 20 ticks away 
from that test, when you're looking at that price level of 107.27, you're looking at 10-year yields right now, 4.63%. Remarkable when you go from 5 to 4.5 like that. We're pairing that a bit, 107.28, but look at that area. Keep it on your radar, man. 107.05, you back things out to a daily yet again. And as you can see, on a daily basis, there's really no retest, right? There's no retest of the breakout of this channel line. You see it when you put it on a an hourly or something like that. But I think you really want a breakout on a daily when this is so well defined on a daily basis. You want to come out of that channel line, come back and retest it. So that's what I'm looking for. And keep your eye on that. And maybe that's the area that you really get an acceleration. Market not quite sure yet. I mean, we get the 10 year up seven basis points to 4.63 percent. So you get a 4.5 handle to start the day. We're trading right now at 107.28. But that's what I'm most watching, most importantly, this week in terms of yields. Are we going to get a pullback to that channel line? If we do get a pullback to that channel line, how do we react? And we go forward, forward from there. 30-year, we're down by 25 right now. Basis points, uh, excuse me, ticks, not basis points. 112.28 on the 30-year. And we jump to the VIX this morning. Quite the resurgence in the market. Yeah, my computer's just a little bit slow this morning. Apologies. And talk about volatility getting sucked out of this market, premium getting sucked out of this market. That's a pretty dramatic volatility squa squash in terms of going from 21 to actually a 14 handle to end the day on Friday. Now, interesting that we pop a bit, but in all contexts, you were actually negative in the S&Ps coming into the Sunday futures. You check out the open last night. We were down at 43.73, so 10 points lower. I guess you were just off by three points or so. Yeah, that's when I was going to bed, basically, looking at the lows. Uh, eight, yeah, eight or nine o'clock, checking in on the futures. And you were basically flat last night. So interesting, you got a little bit of a VIX to higher volatility. But 15.13 is the tag there. All right, in terms of what we're going to talk about, we got a lot to talk about, but let's take a look at some of the Magnificent Seven as we come in. Amazon shares last Monday was pushing a 120 handle. We're pushing almost 140 as of the close of Friday. You jump over to Apple, disappointing numbers for them, and they almost get it all back, right? Remarkable. You were coming into the earnings at 177. You trade down to 170. Four on the open on Friday, and by the end of the trading session, you were back to a 176 handle, basically where you were at the beginning of the session on Thursday. I don't know. That's a little bit dicey when I look at things. Uh, of course, you have the Fed acceleration. Chairman Powell is a big week last week, man. The Fed and Chairman Powell listening to his press conference when I was uh, I was out in those Great Smoky Mountains. I had Chairman Powell up there live on Tiger TV, checking it out, watching the press conference at 2:30 till about 3:15. He went into my dad's program, finishing up maybe even 3:30. Right? He had a good long press conference there. He was pretty strong in his words, and you should listen to the chairman. And he was talking about the risks. And he was saying, listen, we are in a we're in a fairly restrictive policy. OK, and the risks are now at least equally equally weighted. And I'm paraphrasing, OK, my interpretation, at least equally weighted. If so, if not more so weighted to the harm that they can do by more hikes versus the risk that they are posing by inflation raging. They are now more worried about their hikes causing harm. So keep that one in mind as we go forward. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot to talk about. We'll talk some of the numbers as we get back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back in three minutes. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now up by about eight points, trading at 43.84. NASDAQ 100 up by 31. Dow up by a similar 31 points right now in the Russell in positive territory as well. Keeping our eye on yields. You jump over to the 10-year right now. Down about 15 ticks, 107.28. We were talking about it earlier in the program. Keep your eye on about 107.05, somewhere in that area. Maybe we pull back for a challenge of that channel line to retest that channel line. And boy, you ever get an acceleration off of there, you're talking about lower yields across the board. We'll see where we go. Right now, you're talking about a 10-year. What are we talking about? 4.6, uh, excuse me, just add it up here. 4.63, yeah, 4.63%, the yield on the 10-year. All right, let's talk a little bit of ETFs. So this is an interesting one, talking about settlements, right? It's always interesting in terms of the amount of days some of these transactions take to settle, at least financially as well. And what this is talking about is U.S. regulators are speeding up settlement times for securities trades, and it's supposed to boost market efficiency and protect investors from potential losses, okay? But boy, it's interesting when you look at the ETF market, especially when you look at the ETF market with exposure to markets outside of the U.S. where they're going to be dealing with different settlement dates and how that's going to impact the cost of those ETFs because they are going to have to spend more money, theoretically, this is all theoretically, uh, to keep in step with the ETF and the underlying assets that they have. This is 500 U.S. listed funds that hold overseas assets. So this is particularly important when you're talking about ETFs that are holding assets outside of the U.S. That's where you're going to have different settlement rules. You're going to have settlement rules with ETFs settling quicker than the transactions underlying those ETFs are settling themselves creating costs for the ETFs, which are definitely going to come down the line and higher fees for consumers. So while transactions and shares of the ETFs themselves are going to settle in one day, down from two currently, the underlying assets will still take two to five days to complete, depending on where they're listed. 
<clears throat> now that's going to be a double problem, as they say, for liquidity providers who are essential, who are essential to the mechanics of an ETF. They're going to be obliged to post collateral for an extra day when the money's flowing into the fund and will potentially have to borrow cash when it's flowing out. On both sides of the equation, it means extra costs that will likely be shouldered by investors. So you can go down the line here. Of course, there's two sides of things in terms of who says what is going to impact investors and consumers the most. But it's an issue, and it's going to be interesting to see how you have a settlement for ETFs going in one day and how that potentially impacts many ETFs that hold assets overseas. And, yeah, it would make sense that those fees would go up in that type of a category. All right, what else we got going on? You can't have a Monday without talking about uh, two of the richest people in the world, right? We'll start off with Tesla. Tesla getting a boost today is they're going to build uh, – a $25,000 euro car in Germany is the headline. They're trading up $3 this morning. There's Tesla shares. Talk about breaking out of their channel line. You gap away from that on their last earnings. And boy, in the same respect, talking about channel lines. Whoops, I didn't win, mean to delete that. Now, here's what's cool, man. If you're looking for a little bit of a reversal of Tesla shares, right? You're saying, I still think it's overvalued. Maybe you think the market's due for a pullback in the same vein. Maybe you fill that gap and test that channel line, and then maybe the acceleration really begins. Tesla's got some problems, man. The auto industry's got some problems. Tesla's trying to ramp up economies of scale, decrease profits. Markets should be worried about that, and they are. Yeah. So the headline here, didn't bring it over yet. They plan to build, uh, excuse me, yes, a 25,000 euro, which is only $26,000 car at its factory near Berlin. Talk about going for the masses, right? Elon wants to push it out to everybody. It makes sense, man. Um, in a long-awaited development for the electric vehicle maker, which is aiming for a mass uptake of its cars. 26 grand, man. Boy, you're going to sell a lot of cars if you can sell them for $26,000 for a Tesla right now that's electric. Yeah. All right, what else we got in terms of some headlines with some specific equities this morning? You got Paramount. Yeah, they're trading a little bit lower. They got quite an acceleration on their numbers, but guess what? Um, Bank of America downgrades the stock to underperform from a buy. Paramount is less valuable if it isn't considering selling off some of the assets that they have. And there's a little bit of an acceleration lower. You got Dish trading lower as well. They're out with their numbers. They miss expectations. 550, boy, that's quite a haircut, right? 10, 11%. So they lost 26 cents a share in the third quarter when the market was expecting you to make 5 cents a share. Never good when you're supposed to make money and you end up losing money. Watch out for that equity today and take a look at this thing, man. Right? Some of these equities, man. Dish also reported 3.7 in billion, uh, excuse me, 3.7 billion in revenue, falling short of 3.72. Yeah, they're in trouble, man. It's interesting. They always have that NFL pass, right? That is something they don't even control anymore. And look at this. You go from 482. I mean, what's that? A 15% acceleration from Wednesday until Friday, and you give it all back by their earnings on Monday morning. Yeah, so this one's quite a headline. You got on City. Citigroup considers deep job cuts as their CEO's overhaul starts taking shape. 10% beyond. Executives will see cuts beyond 10%, eliminate regional managers, co-heads, and others with overlapping responsibilities. You jump over to City. Yeah, no huge reaction for City shares. Let's take a look at some of those other automakers. Yeah, GM. I mean, look at these. Yeah, same deal, right? You know, channels work both ways in terms of channels. My dad calls it ice sometimes, right? Visual areas of support and resistance. I mean, check this up. Just going back on a three-year, right? What area is the critical area on the bottom side of this? $32 potentially, okay? Now, you come back up, you're going to face resistance. That area of support could potentially, nothing is for sure, right? But it would make sense. That could turn into a little bit of an area of resistance, $32. And boy, maybe you jump up to that area and you trade lower, there's your five-year weekly. Now, even more interesting that that area correlates to the 618 of the entire run you had from 1433 up to 6721. You know, you're looking to get short any of these automakers, man. 
as is always the case, folks, one of the most important things when trading, myself in my trading journey, you got to take stops, you got to set stops. And one of the coolest parts of when you set trades up like this, right, is you make a plan, you trade the plan, as Mr. Larry Pesavento would say, and then you know whether you're right or wrong, okay? You're looking for a short at GM, man. That's a nice area. You've, you've turned an area of support into an area of resistance. You're about $2 above where you're at right now. Not necessarily will you get that. You might miss the trade. But you'd much rather miss a trade, folks, than be in a losing trade, okay? Because there's opportunity cost. But one cool tidbit, right? When you're looking at trades, and I, I learned this from playing poker, all right? We'll talk a little bit about this when we come back even. Or maybe I'll finish this thought. But we got about 30 seconds until the break. When you look at a trade, right, say to yourself, do I need to make this trade? Say to yourself, am I losing money by not making this trade? And then ask yourself if you should make the trade. Don't say, can I make money? You can always make money. Make sure the setup is good enough where you say to yourself, you know what? I might be losing money by not making this trade. I'm going to talk a little bit mentality because, boy, the mentality of trading is many times more important than the technicals itself. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. we got a lot to talk about. Stay tuned. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&Ps up by 10 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up by 36. The Dow catches a little bit of a bid on the open there. We're up by 82 right now on the Dow and the Russell, positive by one. Okay, so jumping back real quick, aside from the charts, what I was just talking about, it's something I found myself using many times when you're looking at a risk scenario, right? I've played a lot of poker in my days. And what I used to do, folks, if you're not familiar, I played online primarily during its heyday. Now, it's absolutely remarkable that online poker was shut down, was it 2015? I'll have to look it up. It was tax day. Let's see. I'm going to look it up right now. They call it Black Friday. <laughs> uh, 2011. I can't believe it. I thought it was 2015. 12 years ago. So it was on tax day, April 15th, 2011 that the Justice Department basically came after Poker Stars and Full Tilt, okay, which were the two big juggernauts in the industry at the time. Full Tilt ended up being basically a Ponzi scheme. Poker Stars uh, was a well-run company, had everybody's money. Long story short, for about two or three years prior to that even, I was playing primarily online, and I would play 20 tables, 24. The, tw the max you could play was 24 at the time of cash game poker, okay? And... The reason why you could play 24 tables and actually even amass any type of strategy was because they have tracking software, completely legal and regulated as part of the ecosystem. But what happens is, is that if you're playing on four tables, that software is tracking the games you play. So you're not using data that anybody else doesn't have. You're just actually organizing that data and tracking that data in a better fashion than people who are not using that software. So the online game accelerated in ways that many of you can probably appreciate out there as traders using data, right? So I have this software that would then put a heads up display over each character or each player, not a character, right? They're real people that I'm playing poker against for real money. And that data would display, okay, this person is playing 15% of their hands. They're raising 5% of their hands. They're folding when they're raised. They would tell me all these statistics coming off only the data I would play with them. But the kicker is for professionals out there or semi-professionals playing 20 to 24 tables at the same time, the amount of hands that you're putting in can be about 1,000 an hour. I could play 10,000 hands in a day. I could play 200,000 hands in a month. You could play theoretically a couple million hands in a year. I think I played a million plus hands in one year. Big data sets, right? So before you know it, any people who were at these games, I had a huge data set on to know, oh, this player is the very tight player. He's only raising when he has 8% of his hands. Well, what is 8% of a poker hand? Well, you can pull it up real quickly in a distribution chart to see that if they're raising only about 8% of their hands, do you know what 8% of their hands are? 8% of their hands are basically like aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack suited, ace, ten suited. That's it. Something like that. It'd be a very, very tight range, 8% of your poker hands. Okay, so I did all that. And I explained that because when you're looking at large data sets and when you're looking at something like a long-term average, right, we're, we're, we're either traders or investors out there. Don't look at it as a one isolated scenario because I was playing so many hands that if I ever just took the approach that I wanted to see you know, when I had a hand like uh, Jack 8 suited or Jack 5 suited, I said, ah, I'm feeling it, right? I'm feeling it. I just want to see a flop with Jack 5 suited. Folks, playing 10,000 hands a day, you start seeing flops all over the place, right? Your money is gone, okay? Because it's too loose of a strategy, especially at those games, which can be very difficult. The way I shifted that mentality is that I asked myself on every hand, because I was playing 10,000 of them a day, Am I losing money by folding this hand? And ask yourself that when you're making a trade, man, because say to yourself, am I losing money if I just don't make this trade? Am I losing money, as in in the long term, right? In the long term, if you're playing a poker game and you got pocket aces, man, okay, and you always hear about the stories or people saying, ah, I got broke with pocket aces, I just like to raise and, and get all in, not see a flop, do all this stuff, right? You are losing money by not risking money with pocket aces. Does that make sense? It should. You're losing money in the long run if you're not willing to put money at risk when you have an advantage. But you're sure you have an advantage with pocket aces because they're the best hand in the game. 
okay? So even though any other pocket pair, you can get pocket aces in against pocket twos, okay? Guy goes all in with pocket twos, girl goes all in with pocket twos, you get it all in with pocket aces, they're gonna win that hand one out of five times. You're gonna be a loser 20% of the time. I just told you I'm playing 10,000 hands a day, okay? 10,000 hands a day, aces come, I think one out of 256 hands in poker, Let's see, 221, okay? So you're dealt pocket aces, about 200, one out of every 221 hands, okay? Well, let's just say it's one out of 200. That means you're gonna get pocket aces five times out of 1,000 hands, and guess what? If I'm playing 10,000 hands, I'm gonna get pocket aces 50 times over the course of that day, five zero. Well, what does that mean? That means I'm gonna lose with pocket aces 10 times a day by playing the hands that I'm playing. But guess what? I'm losing money in the long run if I fold those hands, okay? So think about that mentality as a trader, though. Ask yourself that question. When you're feeling the itch to make a trade, say to yourself, is this a profitable setup where I believe in the long term, if I don't make this trade, I'm probably giving up money because it's such a good setup versus saying maybe I just feel like it's a good trade and I'll keep my – you know, make that mentality. Ask yourself that question, man, because um, that's something that's helped me a lot look at things and it does come from poker because it changes the mentality. It's almost how Larry thinks about it, right? It's not what you can make, it's what you can lose. So first of all, look at something and say, is it worth it for me to put this money up to risk and potentially lose it because the probability of a profit is enough? Ask yourself that, okay? And in poker, it really changed my mindset and it allowed me to play hands in a different manner where I would say, no, no, no. I know that I'm risking money. I know that even with pocket aces, they're going to have a good chance of taking me down. I just told you, man, I might lose 10 times a day with pocket aces. But guess what? That means I win 40 times. Okay? So ask yourself it. Either way. All right. Let's see what else we got going on. Let's check in on the markets. But the mentality side of things, folks, you know, what, what Larry brings to the table in that same way, it's not what you can make. It's what you can lose. A little bit of a simmer attitude to think about that, you know? It's not what you can make, it's what you can lose. Uh, are you losing money by skipping out on this trade in the long run? Ask yourself that question, because I think a lot of times, you look at a setup and you say, ah, I'm, I might not be, be losing money in the long term, right? I can probably wait for a little bit better setup, maybe. It's not super ideal where I think I'm just giving away money by keeping money in my pocket. Because we got some volatil volatility coming down the line, folks. Look at these swings we're getting in the S&Ps, man. We were just at 41.22, and just like that, we're trading at 43.85 right now. All right, what are we going to talk about? Yeah, this one's an interesting one. So this one was out, I think, on Friday. I was reading it this weekend. Let's see. November 3rd, what day is that, Friday? Yeah, so this one was out Friday. I was reading it this weekend. Didn't do the program Friday. Of course, our man Jacob Shoup was filling in. I appreciate that, but keep this one on your radar, man. Zero coupon bonds, convertibles, maturing, 2026. That's going to be coming up in about a year, and boy, they are going to have some difficulty. And this is all on the Fed's mind. We'll talk a little bit about this. We'll talk some earnings this week. We got Disney. We got Uber. We'll take a look at it as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Tires. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Orr joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by about six points right now, trading at 43.83. We spiked to 43.89 as the market opened. We've given it back right to the opening bell. You got the Russell rolling over. How about that, right? Russell, man, so volatile. Off by 13 points right now. That's about three quarters percent right now at 17.54. You get the NASDAQ 100 up by 53. You got crude right now up a buck 32 at 81.84. We check in on gold. Gold contract down about $6 right now, trading at 19.92. And let's check in on yields for sure. Hanging about 107.28, as I mentioned, right? On the daily basis, you back things out. You're looking at a price level of about 107.05, thereabouts. Maybe we test that area. That's going to be a critical one. All right, folks, tomorrow we got a treat. Our man Tim Ort, he comes on with my dad every Tuesday and Thursday. If you've heard Tim on the program, he's always talking about ratios, right? The ratio of one versus another and how those are indicative of potential either, maybe it's fear, maybe it's panic, maybe it's a, uh, a low, maybe it's a high. He's doing a webinar Tuesday night. It's 90 minutes, so it's gonna be right after my dad's program from four till 5.30 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, okay? The six secret ratios every trader should know, and these are the ratios, the TLT VIX, the SPY VIX, the SPX VIX on a weekly basis, the daily VVIX VIX, the bull bear ratio, and the trend panic levels. He'll be talking about each one of those. He'll go through how you should understand it, how it's calculated, how you can use it to trade, what it means. Uh, it should be a great webinar, folks. Check it out. The cost is $149. You can check, click right on the front page of TFNN. You click check out. It pops up, six secret ratios with Tim Ward. It will be archived. It's something that you're going to want to go over a couple times at least. Probably more than that when you're talking about six different levels, um, excuse me, ratios that he'll be talking about. And yeah, that's tomorrow night. He'll be on with my dad as well. Check it out. And don't wait till the last minute, folks, because we do have to get you into the room if you're not a member of the Tigers Den already. If you are a member of the Den, it's as simple as you sign up. We tag you. You gain access to the room. You get to watch it live. You'll be in there with Tim for 90 minutes. It'll be archived on your page forever. You can watch it however many times you'd like. Uh, and boy, he, he's had some great calls on Tom's show, uh, my dad's show. Just some outstanding calls, really, when we've seen either the market accelerate higher, accelerate lower. I mean, he was on there when the market was down at 4,100 and change. I heard him talking about, yeah, I think this is, uh, and I'm gonna paraphrase, but 
I had some shorts on and I was listening to it and he was talking about maybe that was a little bit of capitulation and sure enough it was. Maybe he'll talk about it tomorrow night and you can ask him about it if you're in that room. So check out uh, that webinar coming up tomorrow at four o'clock on the front page of TFNN. Okay, what else we're talking about? Yeah, we're talking about zero coupon bonds. So check it out. Uh, the pandemic darlings are the ones that really got away with this. And just some of the statistics are pretty remarkable. I was reading this over the weekend, as I said, uh, Sunday, okay? And companies are gonna face a wall of free debt maturities through 2026, refinancing, free, refinancing the zero coupon convertible bonds may become a burden, may become a burden is what they say. Let me jump in here. Where's that one? Here we go. Okay. So what happened here is that during the pandemic, companies from Peloton to JustEatTakeaway.com took advantage of investors' hunger for stocks that boomed during lockdowns by issuing convertible bonds, which can be turned into equity with no coupon at all. Some of these statistics, man, you talk about euphoria because, boy, if you were able to recognize the euphoria, I mean, they got away with, I mean, these companies, to their credit, man, kudos to them for selling convertible bonds. And this is what to look for in the future, folks. When you got companies selling zero coupon convertible bonds well out, they are saying they don't think the price is going to hit that level, right? They're not selling you convertible bonds that have no interest at a convertible price, if they think that you're gonna be able to convert that into equity and it's gonna cost them more than it would just to pay you a very low interest rate. And interest rates were very low when they were issuing these and still people ate them up, okay? And still they issue them. Companies still issue them even though they could have issued debt at a very low interest rate. And some of these companies, you'll see. Check out 2021, man. 69 billion is what they're facing, okay? 58 billion of those were issued in 2021, and you see a year like none other, man. You know, 2019, you only had 5,000, 5 billion, 5,000, 5,000 million, 5 billion zero coupon convertible bonds. You know what the best part about this is? Check out some of the prices that they pushed out to investors. Uh, now, what's going to happen here is they're going to need to refinance these. They're coming due. And guess what? They're going to have to pay interest probably on these refinancing, these zero coupon bonds. There's $69 billion out there. And some of the pandemic darlings that are already struggling have a lot of that money out there. Okay. Let's see what we got. Here we go. Peloton. This is, this is the poster boy, right? Peloton hit a low of 430 last week. The stock's been in trouble to put it lightly. Okay. Shares were up recently on their last earnings event, but boy, it's been a long way from where it was in 2021. That's when it issued in February of 2021 zero coupon bonds at a time when demand for its exercise cycles and online classes gave the firm a market value of more than $43.5 billion. Stock was trading at $150 a share, okay? Guess what price they were convertible at? 240 amazing. Buoyed by this, the exuberance in the market, the company slapped a conversion price of $239 on a billion dollars of bonds on the expectation that the stock would keep rising and the market ate it up. But as the market exuberance faded, the firm's performance sank in part because of recalls. It's now valued at almost $2 billion. They pushed out a billion dollar of bonds convertible at 240 bucks. By the time those bonds expired, the company's trading at $5, and the whole company is only valued at $2 billion. Just crazy, right? So these are all going to come due. And some of the biggest companies out here, check out what they have. Airbnb's got $2 billion out there. Spotify's got $1.5 billion. Twitter, X, $1.5. DraftKings at $1.2. It's all the darlings, man. Beyond Meat, Uber, Snapchat, Peloton, uh, DocuSign, and the Just Eat Takeaway. I'm not familiar with Just Eat Takeaway. Maybe they were rocking and rolling during the pandemic. But boy, that's a big one. Um, in terms of how these are going to go. So keep that on your radar. They come up due in 2026. They're going to have to start looking to refinance in 2025. And this is going to be a burden that you're going to have billions of dollars in debts for specific companies that are going to have to be refinanced. And they're going to go from paying zero interest coupons to paying interest, which is going to matter, of course, at a time when many of those companies are already struggling to a certain degree. 
Okay, what else do we got coming up? Let's check out some of the equities with their numbers as we talked about this week. Disney shares trade higher last week with the market up to about 85. You're positive with the market this morning. You jump over to the Analyze tab, and you're talking about their numbers coming out on Wednesday, and you're looking at about a 5% move, $4.76 move, move priced in for their earnings event. You jump over to Uber. They are with their numbers tomorrow. And Uber, a little bit more volatility, $3.16 priced into Uber earnings. 47.57 is where you're trading right now. They give it up in the open as we get the Dow giving it up off by seven. NASDAQ barely holding on to gains. Let's check out the big dogs as we come into this final break. Can't hold Apple down, man. Look at this. Apple at a recent high above where you came into their earnings at. Absolutely remarkable. You jump over to Microsoft shares up by seven tenths percent. Amazon shares up by eight tenths percent. Tesla up by a percent as well. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. I'll come back with some pictures of the Great Smoky Mountains. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by three right now. You got the 10-year trading a little bit lower, 107.25 right now on that 10-year. And we jump over to some pictures, man. So as I mentioned, the Great Smoky Mountains will start off 
Tommy and Landon enjoying the cabins. We had a nice cabin, had a nice beautiful view of the mountains at one point. Uh, there they are, Tommy. He was in Halloween mode, man. He's got his skeleton. He's in a Spider-Man phase right now. Landon's enjoying the stroller as well. We jump around. Uh, I joined the party. There we are. Landon's got his Halloween outfit on there right there. And check out those beautiful mountains, man. Coming from Florida. Actually, absolutely beautiful. We made it to the uh, Ripley's Aquarium in the Great Smokies. We got uh, a dinosaur and Harry Potter hanging out for Halloween, doing a little bit of trick-or-treating there. And absolutely amazing aquarium. If you are around the Gatlinburg area, check out the Ripley's Aquarium. Pretty cool. There's Tommy in the middle of one of the aquarium. And they, they had just too many beautiful things to see. There we all are hanging out at the aquarium for Halloween. And uh, Tommy and Landon enjoying some of the features of the aquarium there. A little dinosaur man himself. He's a volcano man as well. They let you put your head up there in the volcano. The little dinosaur man, Tommy, enjoying the volcano there. He was excited. We were at the, the Land Shark Grill, something like Margaritaville. They had a Margaritaville Resort. Tommy was excited. Check it out. He was enjoying it. He was in a good mood following the aquarium. Uh, we saw a black bear on the side of the road. We went to uh, Cades Cove, if you're familiar. Nice, beautiful ride in there. We saw a black bear on the side of the road. They had a ranger there making sure he didn't get too close. We saw some beautiful deer as well. There's some deer out there. Lots of deer. We saw one one bear, which was pretty cool. Uh, Tommy was enjoying his shades, those beautiful mountains out there. We were all enjoying that beautiful mountainry out there. And then you check out, uh, what do I got? I got anything else? Oh, yeah. Check out that beautiful waterfall that we made it to. Uh, lower, lower Falls, something like that. Beautiful hike. Nonetheless, visit the Great Smoky Mountains if you get a shot, folks. Uh, just beautiful, especially coming from Florida. Some nice, cool, crisp weather with a nice, beautiful Halloween. But it feel, feels good to be back in the seat. Thanks so much for kicking your Monday off with me right here. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up with next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Steve Rhodes live at 11. Fast Market from the Schwab Network at 12. Our man Larry Pesavento live at 1 o'clock. My dad, Tom O'Brien, live from 3 till 4. Don't forget about Tim Ord. That was six secret ratios, man. The ratios. I'm going to be in there tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Don't forget about it. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. And stay tuned for Basil. See you tomorrow, folks. Have a great Monday.